Hi everybody. Today I'm going to talk to you about rainbow watercolor pans. So I got this idea. It was a it was a culmination of a, of a few different things, but I really enjoy sketching with these three color pencils, and I, I've got a few on my desk here. But if you're not familiar, they just basically sketch out in different colors as you rotate the pencil. The nice thing about these, and this is a Koenor lead in a Caveco SketchUp holder, by the way. The nice thing about these, this one anyway, is that the colors are pretty, I mean, they're the standard primary set, but because it's, because it's the standard primary set, if you continue to go over a spot, you will eventually get something pretty close to black. And so these are really nice to do studies because they're monochrome, but they're fun and interesting. They're, they're monochrome in that um, you don't really have control that much. I really love using these pencils for studies, for things where I'm just looking at value rather than actual color selection. If I just wanna play around. Um, so I'll just show you really quickly. So this sketch, for example, is done with one of those pencils. And I've got a, a few in here. This was done with a two color pencil, this one. So the Vermilion Prussian Blue. Uh, this one, I did get into adding a little bit of marker at some point, I don't think I like it. And then these were back to, these are done with a multicolor rainbow pencil. So one of these probably, which have more colors in them. This one has four and this one has six or eight, I think. And these are kind of tricky because you can actually rotate the pencil to get the color that you want. With this one, the colors are all mixed up in the lead. With these, you can actually kind of pick and choose your color to a certain extent. Anyway, I really enjoy doing color studies this way. And so what I've done is make some paint pans that are kind of like the rainbow pencil version of watercolor. So I've got two here, I've made two so far. Uh, I made the second one because I, I had room in the, in the tin, basically. <laughs> um, so what I've done is there are four or five layers in each of these full pans and each layer is divided into two colors and they look like this one, this is a new one. So the way I've coordinated the colors in these palettes are both up and down and side to side. So each layer has two colors and I usually start the bottom layer with, um, I'll start with primary colors cause it's easier. So I'll start from the bottom up over here. I'll have a yellow and then I may have um, a magenta shade. And these two colors will be the bottom layer. And then above that, because I want colors that work together, I'll choose a primary blue. Again, this is just the first couple of layers. I'll choose a primary blue and I'll pick one side or the other, it doesn't matter. Now the interesting part is once we get past the primaries, what do we do after that? And so to a certain extent, I stick to colors that I know will mix together. So in other words, the color in this slot probably needs to mix fairly well with this shade and this shade. So for example, I could do like a phthalo green just to keep it up with the basics. Now this is where things get really interesting. At this point, and I also don't repeat colors by the way when I do this. At this point I would probably end up putting um, a burnt sienna or something like a burnt sienna above the blue shade because I know those will give me some version of a gray if those mix together. And because I've got Burnt Sienna, I might choose Indian Throne Blue. And now I get really funky. So I've got Indian Throne Blue and Burnt Sienna, and those will mix together to make a gray. These will mix together to make a gray. What I probably would want to put in at this point is probably an orange. So I'd put transparent orange here. And then to go with that orange, 
possibly something like an olive green or maybe a green gold. And then for this pan, I actually put, um, I don't have it in this palette, but I'm sure I put Moon Glow on the top of this one and I put it across the whole thing. And I did that just to get me started with the, um, with the color, the value studies, because Moon Glow is kind of a nice standard value study color. And it's got some interesting like separation and stuff. So, so as you're layering your paints, I just want to make sure that I point out, you need to let each layer of two colors dry for a few days before you add the next two layers or the next two colors. Also, this doesn't work so well with honey based paints like M Graham because they just take so long to dry out. And in some environments they might not dry out at all. So definitely stick with like, um, Daniel Smith or Windsor Newton Mission Gold paints that you know will dry down. Um, so put in a layer, wait at least two to three days, depending on your environment, and then put in the next layer, wait two to three days. So it does take some time, but by the time you're done, you have something really fun to do your sketches with. Um, the way that these pins work actually in function, or in practice, I should say, now this pan started with Moon Glow and it's had Burnt Sienna and there's Ultramarine Blue below that and then it's got, I think, Undersea Green and then maybe, I think there's like a Quinacridone Rose color underneath that that's starting to pop out. So I'm just going to show you all the colors I can get just from this one palette. I'm just going to start on the edge here. And keep in mind, I've pretty much worked through the, it might have been Shadow Violet. I pretty much worked through the top color at this point. Um, so this, for example, is Moon Glow mixed with Burnt Sienna or Shadow Violet or whatever color I put on top. So there's, there's more of the Shadow Violet. Um, so, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of struggling to find the Shadow Violet because I've used most of it. That's, that's Moon Glow, not Shadow Violet. Um, so anyway, that's the Moon Glow, and then we get into the Burnt Sienna, which has already started the Ultramarine Blue below it, so that's why that looks that way. But I can still kind of, sort of, get to a uh, Burnt Sienna shade if I try. Yeah, so there's your Burnt Sienna. And on the other side, as I said, I've got Undersea Green. That's the majority of the other side right now. And I've also got poking out from that, yeah, that would be quinacridone violet probably. Let's see if I can get to it. Or nope, actually that's a red, not a violet. So I've got this red peeking through underneath the um, undersea green. And so I'm trying to work through these pans relatively consistently so that I don't have like six colors up the sides of the pan by the time I'm done. But I'm working through this pretty quickly be just because it's so much fun. I can do, um, I mean, I can do full color, full value studies um, just with the one pan. So I'll just show you what I've been working on. And please don't judge me. I'm still in practice mode. <laughs> I've been working on floral paintings just to see if I can get some loose florals going. And so I painted this all with, all with this pan. And so you can see the ultramarine, the undersea blue, uh, undersea green is pretty prominent. Um, lots of uh, burnt sienna in here. And so it's, it's just, it's just fun. It keeps things interesting. The other pan I have in here, um, this one is brand new. I just finished that one. It, I might could do another layer on it, but it's mostly done. Um, it's the same concept, but I threw in a, a few more odd or interesting, like non-primary colors in this palette, uh, in this pan. So currently on the top, I have um, Daniel Smith's Thalo Blue Turquoise, which is PB, PB16, I think. And then on this side, I've got, um, I think it's, Monte Amiata Natural Sienna, not Natural Sienna, Monte, Monte, Monte Amiata Natural Sienna. That's it. Uh, so that's that shade. 
And what's really fun is when you load your brush with both of them, you get a beautiful yellow to green mix. So just, just some ideas of, of how you might want to do this. Just keep in mind as you create your layers of paint that the colors do mix. And so you kind of need to be conscious about which colors you're choosing for which layer. So I know, for example, that this orange and green layer is going to get real funky. Um, whereas the rest of them will probably mix relatively well. So that green and pink will give me a purple. Uh, this will give me a green. This will give me a nice grayish granulating shade, which would be interesting. This is the only one that's kind of funky. Also the orange and blue will probably end up gray or brown. So I might get into a gray zone here at the top. But anyway, I just wanted to quickly show you this because it's it's a really fun way to increase your motivation to paint um, because you it's it's like when you're knitting self-striping knitwear self-striping socks for example um, you just keep knitting because you want to get to the next stripe color this is the same you just keep painting because you want to get to the next color in the pan and if you have two of them here together I mean imagine all the colors you could create just with the four to six colors I have accessible right now. And the deeper you go in the pan, the more colors you have. So anyway, I just wanted to show this off because I think it's really fun and interesting. And, and actually I think this is a fairly nice color palette. The colors do get muddy sometimes, so you kind of have to deal with that. But most of this is happening because of that undersea green that's currently on the palette. And as soon as I get through that, it'll brighten up a little bit. Anyway. Uh, it's really fun for me. It's interesting just to do little studies without having to worry about what color I'm picking. I just dip the dip the paintbrush in and go most of the time, and what color it is is what color it is. I do sometimes do a little bit of mixing here in the top, if mostly just to lighten a color, not to mix two colors, but I'm, if I need to add water, I'll do that in that space. And often I'll just mix all the colors that are here to get to a value that I need. So it's a really versatile way to do some studies. It's really nice, depending on your color selection, it can be really fun for travel painting, for example, because you just take this little, take this little tin with you. I mean, it's super small. It fits in your, I mean, it'll fit inside anything. Um, and just, you know, a travel sketchbook or whatever and be on your way, so. Anyway, I hope that you will try this little experiment. Let me know what you think. Um, have you done this before? Are you going to try it? What colors do you think you might put in your rainbow palette? I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment down below and I will see you next week. Bye.